Mimini mpita jika tika dunia Makao yangu ni kwa baba ju Baba yangu kani andali ya makao Alipo yeye na mindi poni wepo Mimini mpita jika tika dunia Makao yangu ni kwa baba ju Baba yangu kani andali ya makao Alipo yeye na mindi poni wepo Najua niko hapa kwa mda Makao yangu ni kwa baba ju Baba yangu kani andali ya makao Alipo yeye na mindi poni wepo Mimi ni mita jika tika dunia Makao yangu ni kwa baba ju Baba yangu kani andali ya makao Alipo yeye na mindi poni wepo Yeah. 
Hello everyone, my name is Leah Chacha and I came in Mountain Mission uh, in 2015 from Tanzania, which is in East Africa. And um, I'm really thankful to be here because it's God's way for me to be here and I'm happy to see all of you and I thank you all for welcoming us here. Um, God has saved my life and I really never thought I would be here right now because it's His way and I'm thankful for Him saving my life. And I think some of you know Mountain Mission School and I'm glad that you guys help us and help the kids there and to, for us to make our dreams come true. And I'm just thankful for God's um, mercy and love and God bless you all. Hey guys, my name is Juliana Chacha and I came here 2015 too. I go to Mante Mission School and like, I'm really thankful for you guys for supporting and helping Mante Mission. You help us to get a better education and we thank you, may God bless you. Um, God is good. Yeah, wonderful. By the way, I have uh, an amplifier within me that was naturally designed by our Heavenly Father. And I'm really so happy to be standing here today. Thank you, Pastor Tim and uh, the church leadership. What a great privilege it is for me to be standing before you. Uh, thank you for this wonderful opportunity that you have accorded us as a city of hope to come here and be able to share our stories. Uh, because the world is about stories anyway. It's about stories. And, uh, and there are many stories in this world. There are good stories and there are bad stories. There are no in-betweens. We have chosen to share the good news. The good news. What is the good news? Good news is when you see people who are hopeless receiving hope. What is good news? Good news is when you see people who are helpless receiving help. What is good news is good news is when you see people who are who are wallowing in sin, embracing the Lord Jesus Christ and marching on towards eternal life because they have received their creator. That is good news. Good news to, is to see people restored. And this is our story. And we are so grateful that you as a church has given us this opportunity to be able to share that. I am so grateful to God. My name is Hudson. I'm married to one wife and three children. And uh, they are born again, all of them. And uh, I really thank God for that. Um, and uh, I want to appreciate this place, man. The, the worship was fantastic. I don't know how you do this guitar thing, man. This is great. <laughs> and the keyboarding and the sound. I was feeling like I, I was in heaven. Thank you so much for that wonderful worship. Shall we appreciate the, the ministers of music here? That was incredible. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. How much time do I have left? Good. Thank you. Um, let's pray. Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you this morning. Thank you for the wonderful time and people that you have brought here this morning to worship you. We thank you that this is the reason we are here. Father, I pray that uh, may your word have unhindered access into our hearts. May it bring hope and uh, healing that we need because we know you are here, right here, present to minister to us. Thank you, Lord, for blessing us this morning. We bless you today, Lord. I pray if there be any person who is sick today, may they leave this place completely healed in the name of Jesus. If there be person who are discouraged, may they leave this place completely encouraged. I pray, Lord, that nobody will leave the same way they came this morning. We thank you in Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Hallelujah. If I say hallelujah, you can say amen. Is that okay? Yeah. Well, that's how we do it in Africa. So allow me to be in Africa just for a few minutes. Thank you very much. Now, um, I want to talk about a subject that the Holy Spirit impressed in my heart 
yesterday night. I didn't know what I was going to share about today. And I woke up very early in the morning at four this morning asking God, what really should I share this morning? I don't, I don't normally say these things, but this is true. And this morning I had a lot of fights, you know, praying and asking God for this. And the message I received this morning is about Christian, I have never preached this elsewhere, so this is the truth. Christian sobriety in a dynamic world. Christian sobriety in a dynamic world. What is sobriety? Sobriety, by the, am I pronouncing it well? Sobriety? Thank you. Sobriety is basically the quality of being staid or solemn. Seriousness, solemnness, severity, earnestness, dignity, being level-headedness, pragmatism, self-control, the all manner of this dictionary um, meanings, self-restraint, Purit puritanism, quality or state of being sober. Can you please ask somebody there, are you sober this morning? <laughs> please don't do it, it's a joke. <laughs> yeah. State of being serious and calm. Serious state of mind when not affected by drugs or alcohol. That is it. That is sobriety. We are living in a world that is not sober. Allow me to create and use this word of alcohol as an imagery to explain because I'm using the word sobriety. Uh, a world that is confused and drunk. A world that is anything that you could possibly think about has been intoxicated. Everything that you could possibly think about is either broken or is breaking or is about to break or is in the process of, being, of breaking up. We are living in a world that is completely, completely devoid of peace, not because of the absence of war. Peace, even just peace from within. This world is full of intoxication. From any spectrum you can think about, if you think about family, challenges right there. If you think about politics, seems to be the food of everybody in this world today. Think about ministry, service to God, challenges all over. Too much noise, too much noise in every area. From the economy, from things not going so well. There are too many voices that are competing with the voice of sobriety, with a voice of peace and calmness. And I have a word of encouragement for you. Was this so from the beginning? Yes. It was so from the beginning. This is not something that is new. It is being amplified in our time. We have the world changing so fast from e-commerce, e-cigarettes, e-church, everything, virtual stuff. You don't have to walk around, you, have, you don't have to drive around, just do something like this and things come. There is need for efficiency and saving time. You know, time is running out. All these happenings are telling you time is running out. There is no time. There is no time. If you ask somebody today, are you able to come here and do, no, 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 I don't have time, I'm too busy. What happened to time? What happened to it? If we come to church like where I come from, people come to church for 15 minutes. 
They look at this clock. If a preacher goes beyond 15 minutes, they're out of the door. You, play, you people are wonderful. Let's appreciate these people. You people are wonderful. You stay in church and you can take as long as you want. Praise the Lord. <laughs> that is wonderful. We have no time. We have no time with our maker. We have no time with our maker. We just have a little time. When you're seeking God and listening to him and, and even just in church, and the Lord is just about to speak to you. Mm. You are off again from that position where the Lord wanted to speak to you. You are off. You're not listening. Too much activity. With little, with little, very little progression. How possibly could one be sober as a Christian in a world that is so dynamic like this? When sin is being multiplied. When things that were taboos before have been normalized today. And a few Christians or Christians who are remaining sober, a few Christians who are sober today are being scared. They are living in fear. They cannot take a stand and voice, champion the cause of righteousness, champion the cause of holiness, champion the cause of truthfulness. We are burying our heads in the, in the sand. And waiting and thinking, things somehow will correct themselves. They will never correct themselves. God is looking for a man like you. Who will take a stand this morning and say, I stand to be counted. I stand to be counted. There was such a man one time when the world was full of sin, separated from God. And that man said, we, God the Father, we cannot sit here and let our brothers, our children die. He said, I'm ready to go and die for these people. And he gave up himself. And he, hung, he was hung on the cross. He died. And today he lives. Today we live because he lives. <laughs> Had he known that, there would have been no hope for the church. We would not have been coming here this morning to enjoy the goodness of God and feel the solace and the comfort of the Spirit. That would have not have been happening today. You are a savior to somebody today. You have been called to bring transformation in your neighborhood, in your family. God is counting on you. In your country, God is counting on you. Will you stand up and take up your cross and say, enough is enough. I'm going to stand for righteousness. I'm going to stand for the truth. If I die, let me die. If I die, let me die. Because I'm a soldier for the Lord Jesus. <laughs> Brethren, it's a time to cock our guns. It's a time to be in our militarized uniforms of faith. It is a time to take the full armor of God and wage war correctly. This is not a life of lazy people. This is not a life of careless people. This is a life of decisive people, determined people, people who are serious. And it is not just happening in the world, it's happening in the church. I will read the Bible so I can become authentic. Romans chapter 7. Romans chapter 7. Verse 15 to 24. I will read step by step as I explain this. So you can hear, there is a man in the Bible equally complaining. All is not well. Pastor, Mama, am I allowed to walk around here? Thank you. Thank you. He says, Romans chapter 7, verse 14. We know that the law is spiritual, but I am unspiritual. Sold as a slave, 
to sin. I do not understand what I do. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. I do not understand what I do. For what I want to do, I do not do. Somebody's here and is equally concerned. He's saying, I have no understanding. No wonder the Bible says, in all you are getting. He says, wisdom is the principal thing. But in all you are getting, get understanding. I do not understand. What I want to do, I do not do. Why? For what I want to do, I do not do. But what I hate, I do. What I hate, I do. What's going on? What's happening here? Why is this person doing what he hates? Why does he, doesn't he have the strength to do the right thing that he knows? Every one of us knows what is the right thing to do. We know it. And truth be told, we want to do the right thing. We want to do it. But what's happening? Why do we find ourselves increasingly doing the things we ought not to be doing? He says, And if I do what I do not want to do, I agree that the law is good. Verse 17, As it is, it is no longer I myself who do it, but it is sin living in me. Hey, sin living in me. I know that nothing good lives in me. I know that nothing good lives in me. This is a Christian who has become complacent. A Christian who has been swallowed up by the happenings in the world. A Christian who has allowed the natural forces, the natural laws of, of this world to load their weight on him. And he's wondering, I know the right thing to do, but I don't do it. I know the right way to follow, but I cannot see it. That time when I want to walk on that path, I cannot see it. He says, I have the desire to do what is good. I have the desire to do what is good. But I cannot carry it out. This is what is happening. We have desires as the church of Jesus Christ. We have desires to do what is good. We have desires to do what is right. Right from Sunday school, we have had every good thing that we know we ought to do. But as we continue even growing up, we find ourselves messing up all the time, or most of the time. But I cannot carry it out. For what I do is not the good I want to do. No, the evil I do not want to do, this I keep on doing. How come he's got strength to do something anyway? Why can't he just be in a neutral place and say, uh, I cannot do evil, I can neither do evil nor right. Why is this person having strength and capacity to actually do bad things? Is the natural force, the natural laws of sin so stronger than the law of our father? Absolutely not. Something is wrong. I'm about to finish. Something is wrong. I do not want to do this. I keep on doing. Now, verse 20. If I do what I do not want to do, if I do what I do not want to do, it is no longer I who do it, but it is sin living in me that does it. Verse 21. So, I find this law at work. When I want to do good, evil is right there. 
<laughs> when I want to do good, evil is right there. Good and bad, good and evil are here. He wants to do good, but evil is standing right here and it's more attractive. But may I submit to you, child of God, even during that moment when we are confronted with evil and good, and we choose to take the root of evil, good is right there beckoning on you. Good is right there standing right there saying, choose me. Choose me today. You can choose me today. So, for in my inner being, I delight in God's law. No, I said, verse 21. So I find this law at work when I want to do good. Evil is right there with me. For in my inner being, I delight in God's law. But I see another law at work in the members of my body, waging war against the law of my mind and making me a prisoner of the law of sin at work within my members. And this man is there crying. And if you read further, he says, oh, just listen, this guy says, within my inner being, I delight in the law of God. But I do not find strength to do what is good. I do not find strength to obey the word of God. Even though I delight in that law. And then he says, there is another force that is waging, waging war against him. And then he, he finds himself hopeless. And in verse 23, 24, he says, Oh, what a wretched man I am. Who will rescue me from this body of death? Who will rescue me from this body of death? Who will do that? And friends, if you open up your eyes again, just in your inner eyes and reflect on what's happening in the world today, you realize that that seems to be the cry of humanity today. Who will rescue me? Oh, what a red man that I am. Who will deliver me? Who will deliver me? He's crying out for help. In other words, he's saying, how can I be sober? In a world that is like that, why is the natural law acting so strongly in my life? Why? There is a truth. Even the entire physical world is crying. It's crying. Romans chapter 8 verse 19 you will hear the cry of the world it says for the earnest expectation of the creature or the creation waits for the manifestation of the son of God in other words everything is crying and saying there is salvation from some place there is deliverance from some place. And this deliverance will come from the Son of God. And the earnest expectation of the creation is eagerly waiting and crying out and saying, where are the sons of God in our days? Where are the sons of God? Where are the sons of God? Who are they? How do they look like? 
Hosea chapter 1 verse 10 says, In the place where it said, in the place where it was said to them, You are not my people. It will be said to them, You are the sons of the living God. In Matthew chapter 5 verse 9, the Bible says, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. John chapter 1 verse 12, the Bible says, Behold what manner of love the Father has given unto us, that we should be called the sons of God. So when the creation is crying, asking for where the sons of God are, we are right here. We are right here. The big question is, are we manifesting? He says, we are waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. Are we manifesting? If we do, what is it that we are manifesting? How come we are not infiltrating the world and being the salt, the real salt that we ought to be? How come darkness seems to be, gross darkness seems to be covering the world so quickly when the light, the owners of light, not even owners of light, the light themselves are all over here. What is happening? He said, you are the light of the world. Now let your light so shine that people may see your good works and praise the Lord. Everybody is waiting. Every creation is waiting. Want, waiting for the manifestation of the sons of God. The Bible says the word of God is able to heal, is able to transform, is able to rescue, is able to deliver, is able to set the captives free, is able to give hope. And you, the sons of God, seated here today, are the dispensers of that hope. You are the dispensers of that life. You are the dispensers of that healing. You are the givers of that encouragement. You are the givers of that salvation. You are the givers of that transformation that the world is seeking for. Politicians will not do it. Money will not do it. It is good, but it will not do it. You carry life. You have received Zoe. The God kind of life. The life that cannot die. Life that is indestructible. Life that overcomes the world. You are already world overcomers. That is who you are. Do you carry that consciousness as children of God? I carry the consciousness of a world overcomer. Everything, there is no weapon fashioned against me shall stand. And every tongue that rises against me, I condemn it. You are well supplied as a child of God. God is not aware that you lack anything to execute your God-given assignment on earth. He is not aware that we lack anything, children of God. We are well supplied. We are well supplied for. He has given us grace upon grace. He has given us life upon life. He has given life in its fullness. Abundant life. Every place you walk, you dispense life. You are a dispenser of life. You cannot dispense two things at the same time. You cannot dispense lukewarm water. It's either hot or cold. We have to take a stand as I finish. We have to take a position, children of God, and say, Lord, I am that man. Use me. I have been silent for a long time. Talking about human rights. <laughs> Woo! Talking about human rights. Praise the Lord. All people, everybody in this world desires life. Everybody. I don't know of anybody in this world who does not want to experience life eternal. I don't know. Everybody in this world desires life. Oh, if you share the gospel, you are infringing on my right. So what? 
infringe on his right, but give him life anyway. If they take you to jail, so what? When you're in jail because of infringing on someone's right, because of sharing the gospel, when they take you there, bring Jesus in jail anyway. It is time for the church to arise. It is time for the church to arise and dominate and subdue the world. We have the capacity to do that. We can no longer keep quiet. We can no longer be silent. When we do, the world is too loud anyway. The world is too loud and we continue doing the same thing. And God is waiting upon us. He's waiting upon me. He's waiting upon you. Let's take this, mu- let's take this wonderful mini- music to the streets. Let's take this wonderful ministry- m- music to Washington, D.C. Let's take it everywhere. He says, go run helter-skelter on the roads and the edges of the road, calling people to come into the kingdom and enjoy the goodness of God. The gospel is so sweet for us to keep it to ourselves. The reason is good news because good news is shared. You cannot have good news and just be laughing. <laughs> I feel good. I feel good, you know, I feel good. <laughs> people ask, what's happening with you? I feel good. I feel... No, you will have to explain. You will have to express yourself and tell them, this is the good thing that I'm experiencing today. Jesus is so good. The Bible says, taste and see that the Lord is good. When you taste, you see. When we taste, our eyes get opened. We begin to see opportunities to, del- to, 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 uh, opportunities to distribute the word of God. We distribute healing. We distribute hope. We distribute life. Every place we go to, we distribute hope. That is my prayer today. That America will rise up and do the thing you know best how to do. You know best how to do. To conquer the world. To conquer? To conquer what? The world. Praise the Lord. I would love to see champions rising up from here, conquering the world with the message of Jesus Christ. We had Billy Graham. Praise the Lord. We had a man of God, Billy Graham. You know him? How many know Billy Graham? And you know what? After Billy Graham, we have you. We have you. We are all gifted to do this thing. Our world begins right there in Jerusalem, from our family, to our work environment, to our communities. You know, we can continue and continue and continue. What a wonderful thing it is, brethren, to remain sober during this time. Remain sober during this time. Refuse to be drawn to the east not to the south. Remain on the narrow path of truth, the word of God. I invite Pastor Tim to conclude.